Why do we go to zoos? Millions of people around the world visit zoos each year, but the reason is hard to explain. Many of those visitors are children, whose lives are already surrounded by animal images. But the animals they see in zoos are little like the toys, cartoons, and decorations that fill their homes. For such children, the encounter with real animals can be confusing, even upsetting. The great interest that children have in animals today might lead one to suppose that this has always been the case. Yet, it was not until the industrial era that reproductions of animals became a regular part of childhood. That was also when zoos became an important part of middle-class life. In prehistoric times, there had been no need for zoos, as animals were an integral part of the human world. Wild animals might be harmless. Or terrifying, common, or sacred, but in every case, our distant ancestors lived together with them in a shared natural environment. The trail that leads to your local zoo may have begun with the 17th-century French philosopher René Descartes. He taught that humans were composed of a physical body and an eternal soul. Animals, by contrast, had only bodies; they were soulless machines. Therefore. They came to be regarded as material commodities that could be controlled and exploited like a natural resource. In the industrial era, the human domination of animals could be seen in the popularity of real-looking animal toys. Children rode rocking horses that had realistic features, and they slept with stuffed bears, tigers, and rabbits that looked and felt almost genuine. The twentieth century marked a further development. The conversion of animals into people. This was the age of Barber the Elephant, Hello Kitty, and the Lion King. Where parents and children had previously wanted animals that looked like animals, they now wanted animals that looked and acted like humans. In the realm of toys and childhood imagination, at least, wild animals became familiar in the literal sense. They became part of the family. For that reason. A visit to the zoo can be disappointing for children today, where they hope to see the living, breathing versions of their character friends. They find instead unfamiliar creatures who cannot speak, smile, or interact with them. But perhaps that disappointment is the best gift a zoo can offer. Encountering genuine animals reminds us forcefully of the boundary between imagination and reality. When we come face to face with real animals in a zoo. Perhaps we will recall our true relationship, not only to animals but to the entire natural world.